Thank you so much, New Tech, for having me. So my name is Mara Cardenas. I have she, her pronouns, and I'm excited to be here today. And I've only got five minutes, so this is going to be a challenge because I tend to be long-winded. So here we go. <laughs> um, so there's two pictures. Do you believe that both of them are me? <laughs> How many people know who the person is on the right? <laughs> so that's Beyonce, and that's kind of like my alter ego because I really look up to her. Honestly, she's an awesome mom. She's an awesome businesswoman, and she can totally dance way better than I can. Um, but a little bit about me. So I work with King County Metro Transit. I'm a senior HR advisor. I've also stood in the role as the Act and Diversity and Inclusion Manager, Talent Acquisition Manager. Um, but I started 16 years ago as a work-study student or an intern, and that's a program for uh, low-income people who need help with tuition. And so that's how I got my foot in the door. Uh, how many of you all have rode a Metro bus with the show of hands? So almost the whole entire room has actually rode on a bus. We are one of the best transit agencies in the world. I'm a little bit biased. <laughs> Give it up for Metro. <laughs> um, and so we have a ton of operators, and that's where you see the most diversity is within our operator classification. Um, when you get on the bus, you'll see a black man, an Asian man, I mean, all kinds of races. But when we move up in the organization, uh, there's a lot less diversity there. Um, but wait, there's more. So what that means is that in addition to our operators, we actually hire for a lot of different positions. We hire project managers, engineers, mechanics, uh, transportation planners, admin specs. And so I want to put it out there. Go to www.kingcounty.gov jobs if you're looking for employment and see what we have to offer. So there's my plug on that. Um, and in addition to uh, DEI work, I, my regular day job is actually a talent acquisition manager. And so I lead a small team. I post job announcements. I screen applications. I facilitate training. And so I wanted to talk with you all briefly about some of the work that we do to advance diversity and inclusion. And so in all of my job postings, I add DNI as one of the job duties and then also list that in the qualification section so that candidates are actually measured on their ability to interact and engage with the diverse population. And then also in the interview questions, I make sure that we ask a question related to DNI on the interview panel and that prior to doing the interview process, our hiring managers go through a training on bias, awareness, and whatnot. Um, and if they try to get past me without a question in there, usually I put it back in there. Um, and then we like to have racial diversity when you go into the room because it feels really awkward already. You're nervous when you go into the room, but being a woman of color and going into a room with an all-white panel, that's even more awkward. And so I like to request or add that, you know, is there any person of color that you could have participate on this panel? So why diversity, equity, and inclusion? What's the business case? So we all know that it's a good thing to do, but I think it's a great business thing to do, right? We found there's numerous studies that are out there that talk about the value add of diversity as far as innovation, as, par as far as problem solving, as far as engaging and interacting with our customers. There's so many reasons to have a diverse and inclusive workforce. Um, and then HR on three. So you guys have to rep for HR. So one, two, three. Oh, that was weak. One, two, three. HR. Yes. So I have this slide in here because a lot of times the finger is pointed to HR or to the DEI group as far as that's your job. Uh, we're not hiring people of a color. That's your job. That's your responsibility. Why aren't you doing anything? And so I want to argue that it's not just HR's job. It's not just the DEI group's job. It's everyone within this room's job. Because you, as people employed with organizations, you're walking advertisement, right? You make it what you determine whether or not someone's going to want to come work for your company or not. And so just take some personal ownership of DEI. Um, and then outreach and networking. So I'm big on that. That's one of the things that I actually find joy in. And so I'm taking every opportunity I can to get out and engage with folks. And these are some of the avenues in which I go about to um, get candidates. So like you see Eventbrite, you're like, what does that have to do with anything? Or how many of you all have used these? Show of hands. Yeah, so each month I go online, I go to Facebook events, and I see what's happening. I go to Meetup, I go to Eventbrite, and I say, where can I meet my candidate pool, right? So it's thinking outside of the box and finding your candidates at random events. 
Um, an example I have is there was a, a HBCU event, and so the uh, college admission staff were there looking for talent or for students, and I thought, oh, I need those students to come work for me as interns. And so they were looking for the students to come to their school, but I was looking for the students interested in HBCU schools to come work for King County. And so I took my little niece with me. We walked around to each table and um, asked students, what are, you, what are you looking to do? Are you looking for a job? Do you know anyone in Seattle? And so we just kind of took that own ownership of that process. Um, and so these are just a few photos of some of the work I've done. On the left, that's the PwC law firm. They had an ERG meeting, employee resource group meeting. Um, and just going to these events and meeting new people and making those connections. Um, there's a workshop I facilitated with the Museum of Flight, with the iFly program. Another workshop I did with um, the Katie Hall Foundation. She's great. Um, and so it's thinking outside of the box. Again, my role is in HR, but I'm passionate about diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, some additional roles. So Future For Us, it's a phenomenal organization. It's geared toward professional development for women. And so we had a collaboration between Amazon, Microsoft, um, some other companies where we gave back to over three, 300 women of color um, on their professional development. And then that's me at Amazon partnering with the Rainer Scholars Program. And so we help coach those students on their resume, on their LinkedIn profile. And I'm not going to get through this presentation. I tried to talk as fast as I could. <laughs> um, and so how many of you all have saw this, seen this slide before? Not too many people. So what you see on the left is equality. And that's giving everybody the exact same thing. And as a recruiter, that's what we try to do. We want to be equal. We want to quickly just shoot the job out there. But what I'm finding is that equity is actually needed, right? And that's giving people what they need to succeed. So one of the examples of how that's played out is you know, a lot of our operators don't have email access. And so what we do is we have the email that goes out. We get that printed out so they actually have access to that. And then another example is that with our um, ERG groups, I'm hoping to work with those groups to bring development opportunities as far as training for interviews. And so this is the slide to tell you that there's no excuses if you're a software engineer, if you're uh, admin spec, if you're in finance, or, like there's something that you can do. Like those students in those classrooms could totally use you in that classroom, sharing your story. Um, there's some people at my job who work with the teachers as far as developing content, like all hands on deck. I don't think anyone from this room could be excluded as far as giving back and furthering diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, and then I'll end on this note. I want everyone to close their eyes. And I want you to think about yourself as a child and the first time that you felt excluded. Think about where you were at, what you were doing, how you felt, that time where you felt like, I just don't belong here. Like, these are not my people. Everybody's staring at me. I feel really awkward. And so you can open your eyes. But for people of color, people who have a um, different sexual orientation, people who have different religious beliefs, when they come into work every day and there's a ton of people that don't look like that, them in the room, that's kind of what we experience every single day. That feeling of, I just don't belong here, right? And so each of you can make an effort to be more inclusive with the people you interact with, with the people in your office to say, you want to come sit by me? Or do you want to join us for coffee? Or um, so-and-so would give a really good input in this meeting, so let me invite her in. Like, you have work to do, pretty much. It's not just on HR, it's not just on the DEI professionals, so I'll end. <laughs> questions for me? I have questions. Sure. So with King County, what we do is we use filters. And so usually we'll filter with the supplemental questions. So we do that, and then we screen it down, and then we actually deep dive into those applications. And then prior to forwarding them to the hiring manager, we redact the name for my work group. We redact your name and your address before we send them to the subject matter expert, which is what we call a SME. So that way that eliminates some of that bias in the hiring process in the back.
Right, right. Um, the fact of the matter, we're a huge organization. We've got over 15,000 employees, and so each employee's experience at King County will be a little bit different. But some of the things we are doing is we started our employee resource groups, so that's an opportunity for people to come together and do that. And then also in the performance evaluations, people are getting measured about diversity, equity, and inclusion, right? Um, there's different sessions that occur. We have our ESJ strategic plan, but the fact of the matter, we have a ton of work to do as far as inclusion because diversity is the easy part, but actually getting people in the organization and allowing them to promote up, which reflects inclusion, right? That's the difficult part because when we look at the top 20% of the income earners within our company, it's not very diverse. And so there's a ton of work to do, but we're taking these baby steps. Sure, so an example could be, tell me about your experience working with various backgrounds, or tell me about your knowledge of white privilege. Like, I've actually seen that on a question. I was like, yes, it's a leadership question. Um, what else do we ask? Um, so something, it's, it's a tell me about question, right? And it's looking at your ability to engage with various backgrounds. Um, it's your awareness of diversity, your awareness of equity. Have you went on our website and actually looked at it and looked on DEI? So questions around that. We actually have a document with a list of questions that we can choose from. Yeah. Any additional questions? In the back. <laughs> they were a little shocked. They were like, because <laughs> I have an associate that redacts the information. She was like, you know, I can't see it. But now they've kind of gotten used to it. Um, there's been a little bit resistance, but um, we're, that's the route. We, we explain the why, right? You, when you see a name, you're going to think, oh, this sounds like a black name, or oh, this, sound, this person sounds Asian. And so we had to explain the why. Um, and if anyone is disgruntled, they haven't had the courage to actually come up to me and tell me. <laughs> they don't want none. No, I'm clowning. <laughs> yes. I mean, that's coming from the government. Do you suggest the, the private sector move to redacting names across the board? Because I feel like agency recruiters, we sometimes do that occasionally. Mm -hmm. Right, right. This is something that Metro Transit has taken on. Um, so across the county, not everyone is actually um, doing that yet. But I think there is value in redacting those contact, those names and the address and whatnot. We haven't moved as forward as like schools and whatnot, but that's the hope. And then you have to have the staffing to do it. So I know in NeoGov, which is the applicant tracking system that we use, you can um, select an option to actually remove the name, and then someone has to go in and actually, um, with Adobe, uh, do the resumes and cover letters. So it adds maybe, I don't know, I should have a conversation with the people that actually do it. Like, how much time are you spending doing that? <laughs> yeah. One more question. Right here. Right, so it's a system, we use NeoGov tracking system, um, and it could be something as simple, so on the a posting they list, this is just for me, right, other recruiters may do it a little bit differently, but on the posting they may list men quals, so it's just a matter of you checking the boxes that say you meet the men quals, right? So that's a pretty straightforward, right? Um, and that's usually what I use it for. So if I have 300 applications, maybe I'm down to 100 that I actually have to go in and manually review. Yeah, thank you.